Look at this. Here I put in my hand between this lamp here and the, and the wall. On the wall we can see the shadow of my hand. You can also see that the shadow is sort of magnified compared to my real size of my hand. So this is sort of a magnification. So this is the most fundamental microscope that you can make, right? If you put in lenses and things, that just makes it more compact device. Uh, but the principles is sort of like this. You can also notice, notice that the no light passes through my hand. So we only see the shadow. So one can say that my hand fully absorbs light. And in bright field microscopy, that is the feature that you're looking upon. Absorption of, of light into the sample. And the more light it absorbs, the darker spots you'll get on the viewing screen. All right, now you know probably the most basic things about light microscopy. Welcome to the first lecture of this material characterization course. We will, will talk about light microscopy. It is uh, good if you to get a good understanding in light microscopy techniques because it will help you out in the further chapter of the course, especially when we talk about electron microscopy and especially transmission electron microscopy, because most of the techniques in those fields are directly comparable to the light microscopy. So let's get started. All right, welcome to the first lecture in light microscopy. If you haven't checked the demonstration move on a light microscope, I suggest you do that before you start viewing this lecture. And uh, the sample preparation movies you can choose as to view afterwards if you like. The course book starts with a section about geometric optics. I will leave that as a home exercise for you to catch up on because I will not talk about that in this lecture. But I do want to talk about this dark field and bright field imaging. And if you take a fundamental thing about the light interaction with the sample, either it can be reflected or absorbed in the sample, or it can have a phase effect on the wavelength of the light that passes through. These are the two things that can happen when light is lit up on the sample. So I will show you a detailed sketch about this. So first I draw a reference wave here, and uh, the, that wave passes through no, nothing, so it has uh, no effect on anything, it's just light passing through. Then I will draw a second ray here of light that will go through a sample that will absorb part of it. And when it goes through here, part of it will be absorbed and the amplitude of the wave will therefore be smaller. The third ray I will draw here will pass through an object here that is phase affecting the wave. And that means it will retard the, the wave in, uh, and the phase of it. So it will not come into sync with the other waves. And uh, this can be, for example, if the, the material have a different refractive index, for example, then you will have effects like this. What you can see here in these uh, examples is that if you have a bright field imaging in a microscope, what you are looking for in the contrast in your picture will be depending completely on absorption. And, and that means if your sample is not absorbing to, too much compared to the surroundings, then the image will be very weak in contrast and will be very hard to see any details in it. That's why you start using these phase techniques. Phase techniques uh, is, for example, uh, phase contrast technique and uh, differential interference contrast. I will talk with, on that in detail on, a, on the second lecture. But uh, at the moment, it, I think it's important just to know that uh, either you have absorption or phase effect on the wave. So in bright field imaging in the microscope, what you do is you collect all the transmitted light that passes through the sample and then the, and the, all the light that's not absorbed or reflected in the sample. That will give you this classic microscope image that you've perhaps seen before from undergraduate school. And, and that technique's, uh, technique is very good if, it's, uh, if the sample has good uh, high absorption of features in it because then you will have good contrast. The reverse side of this technique is the dark field imaging. In the dark field imaging, what you do then is that instead of looking at all the transmitted unaffected light, you cancel out that light and only look at the light that is reflected in the sample. So that will give you an image that looks inverse to the, to the bright field image. 
all the white parts will become uh, black in, in this case and, and you, the sample will appear as it, it glows by itself when you look up on it. And the dark field image also is an advantage when you have uh, a reflective light on the surface. And you, you know the light microscope, you saw that in the demo movie, you can both have transmitted light that goes through and you can have reflected light on top as well. If you only use the top reflecting light technique, then this dark field imaging is this very handy when you look, for example, at the metallic sample that you have etched. In that case, all the grains will have uh, small uh, chamfered edges due to the etching and that will reflect light differently and if you use the dark field imaging technique on that you will see the grain, grains very clearly uh, so that is a very good technique for that so uh, if i'm going to draw how this basically works it uh, it is like this uh, there's a picture in the book of this also and uh, i think it's uh, very handy so so I draw a, a side view of the microscope here and at the bottom I draw the condenser lens with its aperture. I also draw a top view beneath here so you can see exactly how the aperture of the condenser looks like. And the aperture is around the dish and in, in um, bright field imaging what you keep is uh, you basically have a hole that looks like this so yeah, that you can change the size, that's the aperture size. So you, what you do is you, the aperture cancel out that everything that's outside the hole, so only light can go through it. Th that is in the bright field image. In the middle I put in our, our glass slide with the sample. And top of the, of the glass slide you know you have the objective on the microscope that picks up the light. So what you can see here is that when the light co comes through the condenser, it will match up. So all the light that will be transmitted through the sample will be picked up by the correlating matching objective here. And, uh, and uh, that will give you this transmitted light image. Instead, if you have this, uh, I draw that on the other side here at the right of it, the dark field imaging case. What you do then is instead of you having this hole of the condenser aperture, you instead have a, a round dish in the center. So what you do is you cancel off all the light that's in the center. And what that means is that the, the light that you shine upon the sample will come in at a specific angle into the sample. And if, if the light is not affected by the sample, it will go out in the same direction. And the smart thing here in dark field imaging is that if you have an objective atop that is built so it matches this angle, so if the, it's, the light is unaffected and passes in the same angle, it will miss the objective and will not pick that, be picked up. If that's the case, you will only see a black screen in, in the microscope when you view it, because uh, all the light has been cancelled out and go outside the objective. But if the light is, re is interacting in the sample and changes angle. So if it's reflected in the sample, then it will take a different angle out from the sample and then it, it, some of it will come into the objective instead. And that will mean that when you look at the image, it will actually look like the sample itself is bright. So then, then you get this inverse effect of the bright field image. The next thing you need to have understanding about is face plates. And face plates uh, were sort of discovered by accident. I think it was by Rayleigh. And uh, he poured out some acid on top of some glass slide and then they found out that this uh, etched down the glass uh, sort of very little and in, in around half a wavelength of the light. And, and that uh, had this kind of face effects when you, he did some optical uh, investigation of it. And a face plate that, that is, that is this glass slide that you have etched an analog shaped ring on top. And what's the smart thing with this? You know, that is if you, comp if you take this face plate glass slide with this specific ring shaped structure upon it, and then you create a 
equal aperture in the condenser with the same annulus shape. So this is sort of a development step from the, the dark field central stop aperture. Here we have a, also a, a specific spacing around, not just a central stopper. If you do that, then all the light that goes through and is, uh, goes through the sample and is un unaffected will have this uh, same angle as in the dark field image. But you pick that up with objective. You create a different objective that can pick up that light as well. Then that light, if you put this face plate on top of the objective, that unaffected light will go through this etched ring in this glass light that we call the face plate. And that means that the wavelength will be shifted half a wavelength compared to if it were reflected in the sample. So if, if due to the sample, if the sample has a different refractive index, for example, then the angle out from the sample by the light beam will be different. And that means that that light, when it hits the face plate on top of the objective, will not go through this etched ring. So it's only unaffected light that goes through the etching. All other light is, has a, is affected by the sample will go somewhere else on the plate. And that means that you will have two waves that goes out on top of the face plate that will be retarded half a wavelength from each other. So, what is the conclusion of this? Light that is interacting with the sample will be shifted half a wavelength compared to non-affected light. These two light rays will interfere with each other and create destructive interference. And that gives you this thing that's called phase contrast. So what you, what you do then, because it's a destructive interference, then then you will have a contrast feature. Things will be look bright and dark depending on the refractive index of the sample. So this makes, gives you the possibility to view samples that have the same absorption of light, but different uh, refractive indexes. Typical example, if you look at the bio biological objects, uh, a cell, for example, living cell, that has uh, uh, liquids and things inside it that is sort of transparent compared to the glass and, and uh, the water that you perhaps put around it in the objective glass. If you put that in, in this phase contrast technique, then you can see if there are different refractive indexes of the cell and, and the surrounding water. Then that will create a contrast and you will more easily see it compared to if you just use bright field imaging. So that is the, the natural development step out from, bright, from dark field imaging. That's the phase contrast technique. I think this is uh, enough for lecture one. Uh, now I talked about uh, bright field imaging, dark field imaging, and uh, a little bit about phase contract, contrast and the phase plate. Uh, what I want you to do now is uh, you do some of the problems uh, in, in the uh, suggestions below, and then uh, you continue on lecture two. In lecture two, I will talk about uh, differential interference contrast and polarization techniques. All right, see you on lecture two.